gentlemen I feel really really happy there is a very good feeling amongst Barbadians and it's inspiring me to do great and great things in St. Philip South but ladies and gentlemen this is serious business and I'm very happy to be here to represent the cause and the interests of the Barbados Labour Party as we mount a rescue mission for this country we love so dearly. I want to agree with something Clay said, and it was towards the end of his speech, that Frindel Stewart is indeed allergic to word. And we in St. Philip South know that ever so well. And that is the reason why after four and a half years, we came together and ran him out of St. Philip South when I became a candidate for the first time. But it's unfortunate that the good constituents in St. Philip and St. Michael South had to be saddled with not only a lazy man, but he is usually, usually incompetent as well. And this is the first time in history that we have had a Prime Minister who is extremely unwilling to become aware of the important issues that a Prime Minister's office should deal with. I've never seen it. Sandy Ford was not the best Prime Minister that this country had, but he tried his best to become aware of some of the things that the Prime Minister's office should have been addressing. But Stuart spends all of his time focusing on every other matter besides those things that are important to the lives of Barbadian people. I stood home last night. They came to races in St. Philip. I live just down the street from races. And I heard them attempting to report to the nation about what they have done for the people in Barbados in the last five years in one month. And all I heard was cussing, dealing with non-issues, name-calling, and continuing to treat politics as a game of making sport. And the few persons who attended the meeting, they had great laughter. But nothing was said there which made any Barbadians feel that this Democratic Labour Party has anything in store for them going forward. But ladies and gentlemen, we have a mission. And this campaign on the side of the Barbados Labour Party will indeed report to the nation for them as well. And we will let every Barbadian know that the Democratic Labour Party, Stenia, has been characterized by a few things. Lies, deceit, propaganda, and of course, great incompetence. And I'm going to use the few minutes allotted to me tonight to address two issues of the Democratic Labour Party. And I'm going to start with housing. Because this country has to come to a point of realization that when persons come to them and say that they want to be politicians, and if their hands are not clean and their hearts are not pure, they should be judged accordingly. And I look forward to the day when every member of the voting public in Barbados could indeed look in the face of a politician as you ought to do when the Democratic Labour Party members come to your houses and say that you promised this, you promised the next. And unless you could come and tell me why you did not address those things, or you did not tell me why you could not achieve it, I have no business with you. Because it is going too far and the Democratic Labour Party politicians have taken it to another level. And what I'm talking about, the lying and the deceit. They've taken it to another level, and all of them should be made to pay for it. 
because the more they deceive the Barbadian public, the worse things have gotten in this country and the more pain and suffering Barbadians have had to endure. And let me give you a couple examples. And I shall spend the duration of this campaign in addition to joining Clay and Owen and the others and reporting on what it is we have in store in order to retool the Barbadian economy, you first have to let the Barbadian public know that the Democratic Labour Party, by virtue of distinguishing themselves as the greatest liars that ever come to the political landscape in Barbados, that they're not deserving of any support. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to this. In the Democratic Labour Party's manifesto of 2008, under the section of housing, they tell you the following, amongst other things. Now, the Democratic Labour Party government will do the, the following. Establish a home ownership revolving fund for public sector workers, providing interest-free loans to appointed public servants with five years service who are first-time home owners. The fund will be capitalized with an initial injection of $40 million. And I'm starting with housing and not economics and finance because the Democratic Labour Party, in attempting and struggling to do so to report to the nation, they're holding up their housing program as the only measure of success. And that is why I'm starting here and not going a little further and deal with what I am more capable of, and that is the economics and the finance. Ladies and gentlemen, they also said the following. Provide 500 lots of land in five months at $5 per square foot for first-time homeowners. Provide 2,500 house spots for sale to low- and middle-income wage earners in the first term of a DLP government. Commit to building 2,000 housing solutions per year in the first term of a DLP government. These will include rental units, terrace units, and starter homes. Increase the tax deduction for mortgages to $20,000 per year. Good God. If you were lining up to vote on the occasion of the last election and a set of wicked, malicious, untruthful people could come and write this into a manifesto and you were awaiting a house, you might be tempted to follow the Democratic Labour Party. And large numbers of Barbadians who were waiting for a house at the time, despite what the Barbados Labour Party was able to achieve in its housing program, they followed the Democratic Labour Party. And ladies and gentlemen, these things hurt, you know. They hurt because persons were deliberately deceived. And when you see what has become of the Democratic Labour Party in trying to deliver in its housing program, nothing of these things here, not one of these things here was actually achieved. Ladies and gentlemen, the Democratic Labour Party wants to give you the impression that housing has been a success. And in order to provide a couple houses, they have literally sold out Barbadians, and some of them should be made to pay for it. They took up 22 acres of land at Corverley in Christchurch. And they went into bed with a company in Barbados and they allowed that company to lease that land in Corverley and Christchurch at $8 a month, virtually in perpetuity. It means that we will go along, go on to the other side. They won't come to the other side because the other side that we're going to is where people who are honest and decent go. They will go somewhere else. But you know what they have done? They have literally given that land to one company in Barbados to put up 1,200 houses up there for which only 221 out of that 1,200 housing stock up there have actually been sold. And they literally gave away the Barbadians' land, 22 acres at $8 a month, 22 acres of land. But it gets worse than that, and the reason why the houses cannot be sold, because they are heavily overpriced, and word reaching me that the profit on every single one of those houses, the profit is in the order of $150,000. And if they want to overprice the houses up there at a time when about 16,000 members of the private sector have gone home 
and they're left with no houses on their hand. Blame the Democratic Labour Party for that. If they will get the people back to work and they will bring a reversal in the economic policies, people will be able to work and buy the houses even though they're heavily inflated in prices. So they hold up a housing program. Ladies and gentlemen, you know at building 2,000 houses a year for five years, you know how many houses we should have in Barbados? Nobody on the waiting list at Eastern Land Development, no one on the waiting list at the National Housing Corporation ought to be there if they could fulfill their promise to build 2,000 houses a year. That is 10,000 houses at the end of this five-year period. And ladies and gentlemen, if they are holding up housing as a success story, and I deem a housing solution to be provided when somebody has taken the keys for the house and they have moved into the house. And the National Housing Corporation and the private sector providers of housing solutions that for which keys have been taken, I can assure you that the total number of houses taken cannot exceed 1,000 houses in Barbados in the last five years. And if housing is supposed to be a success story, by that very count alone, because it is 1,000 out of a committed 10,000, and the arithmetic will tell me that they are holding up as a success story 10% of what they say they would achieve. So if housing is the only success story of the Democratic Labour Party, the Democratic Labour Party is a 10% success government. And this country is accustomed to a government that provides a level of success way in excess of 10%. Because you know where the Barbados Labour Party took this country from in 1994, you know the pain and the suffering that most Barbadians had to endure in the period between 1991 and 1994, and you know what we have been able to achieve in this country between 1994 and 2008. So I want you, every time they come and talk this foolishness about housing, let them know that I told you that the amount of houses that have been taken by Barbadians since the last election it's one-tenth of what they say they were going to provide by way of housing solutions. And all the other foolishness that they're putting here about interest-free loans for public servants with five years tenure, all of this is a lie. All of it is untrue. None of it was demonstrated. And every public servant that fell for this foolishness should go and vote in their large numbers to ensure that these liars and deceitful rats avoided out. And I'm going to go to the next point, page 23. Page 23 deals with economic development. And this is what, you know, it pains, it pains us. Who has spent many years, many, many years, trying to acquire skills in economics and finance. And my colleagues at the university outside of Barbados, they look on and they say to me, what has Barbados been reduced to? That a country that had distinguished itself with respect to economic management under the leadership of Owen Arthur and prior to that Earl Burrow and Tom Adams and Bree St. John, that we have been reduced now to the laughing stock when it comes to economic management to have an economic lung is not even as good enough to say a student of economics being a minister of finance in economic affairs in this country. It is a hurtful thing. It is a painful thing. And the sooner that you all are able to help the Barbados Labour Party and help the country to rid itself of someone who should not even be in a basic first year class in economics that I teach or Clay teach, you will be doing the country a big favor. And I make no apologies for that. But this is what they said. Under restoring balance, under new macroeconomic policy paradigm. Could you imagine the Democratic Labour Party said the following? that they will ensure a tightly managed debt accumulation strategy targeted at the reduction in both domestic and foreign components of the national debt. Ladies and gentlemen, this 
is a big lie. I can tell you that when the Barbados Labor Party left in 2008, the national debt of Barbados stood somewhere in the neighborhood of $3 billion. And you could remember that a lot of that accumulation in the debt of Barbados was as a result of a deliberate attempt on the part of Juan Arthur and his cabinet in building out the capacity of Barbados. And we could have seen why we accumulated debt in Barbados. The number of persons gaining employment was increasing. You go up at the airport and you see what happened there. You go down at the seaport and you see what happened there. You go over to Hilton and you see what happened there. And we understand that a small open economy must indeed engage in deficit financing in order to deal with its developmental needs. And that has been established as a principle long, long time ago. But ladies and gentlemen, the national debt in Barbados has skyrocketed and it spiraled out of control since the Democratic Labour Party has come to power. And one would expect that if you're going to increase the national debt in Barbados by something of the order of two point something billion dollars, that there should be something in this economy by way of building capacity and giving the economy an opportunity to have income generating and regenerating policies well into the future that the sustainability of this Barbadian economy could indeed be assured. But what have we gotten for this skyrocketing of the national debt in Barbados? We have seen poverty left, right, and center. You cannot identify any major landmark, any major facility in Barbados that speaks to a serious attempt at building capacity. You have seen people suffering. You have seen those living below the poverty line in Barbados increase from nine point something percent to virtually 30 percent. You have seen the private sector having to shed labor to the tune of $16,000. You have seen a cut in the votes to many social services in Barbados, and in some cases, significant cuts. So you can say that they have settled the country with a massive increase in the national debt, and they have nothing by way of economic improvement to show for it. But it goes a little further than that. They have also said that one of the things they will do is get the attainment of full employment through the private sector's response to new domestic entrepreneurial and investment opportunities in traditional and, more importantly, new industrial, cultural, and knowledge sectors. You all understand what I just read there? The attainment of full employment through generating larger and more substantial activity in the private sector. And the opposite has materialized. What has materialized is a shrinking of activity in the private sector. We told the stupid, ignorant fellow who is the Minister of Finance in Barbados that you cannot tax your way out of a recession. Motley told him so back in 2008. Any person who had a brush with economics would know that you cannot tax your way out of recession. And when even Barack Obama, who inherited a massive, massive fiscal problem in the United States, he took the deliberate decision that he is not going to let this eco his economy implode, and that he will introduce stimulus packages so as to stall the decline in economic activity in the United States. And the first thing these foolish people did, Thompson was still alive, and he is the one who started this decline in the Barbadian economy, because he inflicted on the Barbados economy in 2008 after being handed a heavy mandate to run this country properly, he inflicted a net taxation increased position on Barbadians in his first budget of a tune of $104 million. A wicked, wicked fellow he was. So they aim, they aim to full employment, and 16,000 persons have gone home. And the unemployment rate in Barbados that was trending in the right direction under the Barbados Labor Party, it now stands at about 14%, the truthful figure. 
You have a large, large proportion of underemployed persons in Barbados, those who are working week on, week off. You have large numbers of persons in the private sector who are working two and three days a week still. And of course, in the civil service, there is a large number of those who are disguisedly unemployed. And for those of you who don't know what is a disguisedly unemployed person, a disguised unemployed person is one who has a marginal product of zero. It means that they contribute nothing to total output. So this government, because they added and they added to the payroll, especially in the last couple of weeks, they added some more too, you know. So they've increased the level of disguised unemployment in Barbados and at a time when the economy needs to be productive and have its workers both in the private sector and in the public sector productive, they are creating a situation in the public sector where workers are uh, encouraged to be non-productive. Just what you don't want. And in order to sustain that non-productivity in the private sector, they have broken new ground. Because it's the first time in the history of economic management in Barbados that a government continues to borrow upwards of $40 million a month to pay wages and salaries. They have broken new ground. And it is the greatest example of incompetence because you're supposed to borrow money to build out an economy and certainly not to pay wages and salaries. The normal functioning of the economy should allow enough taxation intake so that you can pay your wages and salaries. And if you can borrow, you can borrow for other types of projects like what we borrowed for, the airport and the seaport and Hilton to build out the economy so that well into the future, those projects can be generating income for you. But it goes a little further than that. You know what they also said? They said that when they are seeking domestic financing, this is where they will go. They will take it from the capital market in preference to the heavy reliance on the National Insurance Fund. You don't know that every time they try to draw along on the National Insurance Fund, they even enter some creative accounting mechanism to get the University of West Indies very work to borrow money from the National Insurance Fund for ordinary operations at the University of West Indies. It is the biggest set of deceit, madness, and all of them should be kicked out for this. To come and say that they are going to tap into the domestic financial system and leave the National Insurance Fund alone, when the opposite is happening, it tells you two things. That they're compulsive liars, they're grossly incompetent, they cannot be trusted, and you have a right to get rid of them and get some economic managers back in place so that this country once again could prosper. <clears throat> this is what they also said. They said they will implement taxation policies that reduce the fiscal drag on the economy. A lot of fancy language that they don't know anything about. But it goes a little further. We shall avoid taxation policies that act as disincentive to investment and productivity. But ladies and gentlemen, the economy is shrinking because nobody has confidence in the Barbarian economy. The investment isn't coming in. There has been a substantial cut in investment in the Barbarian economy. And we know that one of the major drivers of growth and development is investment. So if you have a situation in the tourism industry that we have had to accept because of their policy failure, no fewer than 31 tourism-related properties being closed since the Barbados Labour Party left office. And that has resulted in 1,300 rooms being taken out of the room stock in Barbados. What do you expect would happen to the economy and the tourism sector? We have a tourism sector that is tired, that is in need and dire need for rejuvenation. And the tourism sector has been begging this Democratic Labour Party to take some pressure off of them. The operational cost is too high. The cost of doing business in the tourism sector and in every other sector in Barbados is too high. And they cannot understand the significant role that tourism plays to the national development. And they are keeping taxation policies in place that are not hurting the business sector only, 
undermining the investment potential, destroying productivity in the tourism and other sectors, but these taxation measures are making every Barbadian suck salt. Ladies and gentlemen, I said the other day that this government has distinguished itself in many, many ways. And I have never yet in the history of following development in Barbados come across a government that has affected every single cohort, a sector of Barbadian society. Every sector has been, every sector has been hit. Everyone, all the sectors in Barbados have been affected. Not only you, the household sector, but the old age pensioners, the workers in the civil service can get an increase. The professionals have had their registration fees increased from $500 to $2,500 a year. Every, every sector, the civil servants can get an increase. Price increases, lashing at everybody. And these people can't understand that you need to give the economy a chance to revive itself. Ladies and gentlemen, they're telling me that my time is up. <clears throat> and believe it or not, I'm now getting in the floor. Right? Because some of us at the university, we have to teach for three hours straight. So when you put a man out here to talk for 25 minutes through tomorrow evening, or teach a class from 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock, you know you're really shortchanging it. But ladies and gentlemen, you can be assured that I will go wherever the Barbados Labour Party wants me to go. And I will partner with Clyde and Mr. Arthur and Motley and all the others because I know what we had to do and the sleepless nights that we had to endure in order to position this economy so that persons in this country could have benefited. And I know the path that we had this economy on and I know that we are extremely capable. In the last five years out of office, we have matured a lot and we've become more skillful at managing the economy and preparing ourselves to manage the economy. But one of the things that I'm certain about, that this country cannot take another day of the Democratic Labour Party after the 21st of February. So ladies and gentlemen, housing and the economy, lies, deceit, propaganda and incompetence come to races on Wednesday and the chapter, another chapter will unfold. I thank you. Crime son, dirty Andrew. Grab soja again. Right now things dread. We bought it for the right. Right now things dread. We bought it for the right. Right now things dread. We bought it for the right. Man, so open your eyes and hold out your head. Right now things dread. We bought it for the right. Right now things dread. We bought it for the right. Right now things dread. We bought it for the right. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, Anthony Wood. Thank you, Anthony Wood. The future of this country is in good, good, going to be in good hands once again. When Anthony Wood, Owen Arthur, and Mia Motley run the affairs once again, ladies and gentlemen. Anthony Wood, tried, tested, and proven. Now I want to say a little something here. There's a fella I like to call Mr. Walker. He walks every place he has to go. They say that that individual is the misrepresentative for the city. I mean that he misrepresents the city. That individual happens to be employed at the Ministry of Housing and Lands. 